what we're going to talk about is the reverse, understanding how we switch our feet as we go through. So a lot of throwers are non-reversers. If you look at our classic non-reversers, Sandra Perkovich, Robert Harding, Lars Riedel, all these great throwers come to mind. But when you look at your reversing thrower, we're looking at, let's look at Alekna Cantor. We're looking at Daniel Stahl. We're looking at Frederick Dakers. We're looking at all these different elite throwers. And again, there's your reverse. One of the things that makes reversing hard, some people teach the jump and switch the feet. Now I understand the logic that that was actually how I was taught to throw, but I don't agree with how that method works. What we want to do is we don't want to jump and turn in the air. We want to be able to work the ground. So if you look at your reversing throwers, one of the things that they really do is as they, they elevate. And one of the things we do in our system is a heel up and push. If you look at our push pivot drill, you're going to see what we're talking about push versus pivoting. And we want to keep that knee moving. So we're moving the delivery side into the throw. Now, one of the things that we kind of talk about, one of the easy ways to train our reverse is that we train our throwers to move through the block. So they're gonna keep the block on the ground and they have to get used to the concept that the throw keeps moving and we time the block leg. Now there's a lot of sequential things going on here. What we're looking at is really position of the upper body. If we have the shoulders opening as we come for what we refer to as our pillar five, six, pillar five is where we're creating more of this pushing motion and do the delivery side out and into the throw. And so if we open the shoulders into delivery too soon, we tend to pull. And so even though we're creating push and on here, do you notice where the hips are facing? So we're trying to get that hip into the throw so we can accelerate the hip through the finish. Now, again, if you look at some of your best non-reversers, they come through and there's like a follow through. So if you look at like Robert Harding or Perkovich, you're going to see that they come through the throw and you're going to watch the, the hip elevation and it still, it moves into the block this way. And so you'll tend to see them come through, but reversing throwers are going to put that foot down more closed so they can activate that block and push the delivery side in. And so a simple tip that we use to help throwers and that we want young throwers and coaches to practice is that the throw doesn't stop here. The throw stops the delivery side moves through and past the block. So again, if we look at from this angle, if you look at my delivery side moving here, the hip is moving this way. So my hips are actually facing to the left of the center line. And that's really critical. So as I pull into the throw and I keep moving the hips through, you're going to notice that the motion I'm showing you becomes very easy. You're going to see that reverse coming through. So switching of the feet or reversing, however you want to refer to it, that's the major thing that we want to be focused on. The thing that we're going to do again, we're thinking about reverse next time you're in practice and you're trying to work on it, push the hips. Don't think finish the throw at six o'clock, accelerate the delivery side in past your block. And that's what you're going to also notice is going to help. You're going to see the block arm stopping. You're going to see that long position. Again, where does these things go? If we're looking at our throw again as a chain reaction, what we set up prior to is going to make that possible. If we're doing something like the back end where we're not sweeping correctly and we're shifting, that reverse is going to become next to impossible because your body's not in a position to allow the reverse. So one of the things is if you're training and you have a big time problem with the reverse, you're going to want to be real conscious of understanding understanding that you're just in the wrong position and you're shifting out of our pillar five. So where you're basically bypassing your five and you're going right into six, which causes a late block hips are here. And so what happens is, is throwers come off and they may not be throwing sector fouls because they're over pulling the discus, but you're losing all the ground contact and you're losing and it's becoming an arm throw and you're just decelerating the implement again. And you're not going to benefit from the reverse. We'd recommend things like the drill down. We'd recommend at your sweep position and understanding those common issues with over rotation and that sort of thing. Because if you're falling off the discus, you can't get your hips through again. If you're falling here, you're going to be falling at the front. And one of the things we're going to do is we'll probably have here in a second, we're going to have James take a couple throws and he flies the discus pretty well, but we're also looking at a couple of things on where we're squaring up and how we have that thumb and angle of release. The angle of release is super critical. So for a lot of you young throwers and coaches, when you see that discus and you kind of can see the circle aspect of, you know, the discus, instead of it looking like a line, you know, you're leaving a lot of results on the table and that's something you absolutely need to focus on. So one of the questions was how much do we focus on that more advanced guy? It's a subtle change. Younger throwers we do in our club. We point out assistant coach James is also helping our young guys feel that out. So what we're going to do is have James take a couple throws and you'll kind of pay attention to where he's seeing that angle of release. And we'll just start out with some simple stand throws and we'll kind of move through his progression and then we'll get some feedback from James to see how much he likes everything he's been doing here. Okay, so here we go. So 
So again, you're gonna notice one of the things is we're trying to do, we're trying to get him to make sure he's extending his radius and keeping that thumb here, which is gonna also help him be able to apply more velocity to the finger, right, or to the edge of the discus and he's gonna create more spin on the discus. So that's why when you turn the thumb up, the discus isn't coming off the edge of that finger real well, and that's gonna make a big difference. So how you hold it is super important, and this is one of the things we're looking for in his throw. Okay, good, so you guys can see that one flew pretty well. And the one thing we're working on is the shoulders turning a little prematurely we want him to turn further out here, so by the time the discus release, his body's more at this point than this point. And that little change, again, is gonna be super critical, and so what you would see with a younger thrower, they're typically gonna wind up pulling that around. So, simple tip today, basically you're gonna be working on how to fly that angle. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah. So, what's the, what's the future of Hammer from that, Denny? <laughs> this is a very, uh,